There are some great new iPad apps out there and well, I wanna cover them. This video is sponsored by Surfshark, let's get into it. Focus OS is the successor to an app I love called Ouchie. Focus OS though is all about configuring different environments. In here you can set up ambient background noises to play and also websites and apps that you wish to block. I love the ability to block certain apps and websites for a unspecified amount of time. I have ADHD and I struggle with focusing, especially if I just have like something in my dock or in Safari that I can just easily distract myself with. From help with apps like Focus OS, I'm able to focus on the task at hand and I'm not distracting myself with stuff like Ivory or Threads or Discord or Reddit or whatever. Now what makes Focus OS different from Ouchie is the setup process is so much simpler now. There's no need to make any weird shortcut automations or have this enable in the background or disable with shortcuts or anything like that. You could do it all right from the app. Plus, it syncs between your devices, so you don't have to make those shortcut automations on all of your devices. Like if you have an iPhone and an iPad, you don't have to do it on both devices. You can just do it one, have the app on both, and it syncs between the two. You just go into the app and create a new environment. In here, you can pick from different ambient sounds you might want to run, or if you just wanna block apps or websites, you can go to that tab and select the apps or websites you wish to block. Then when you're ready to use this environment, you just enable it. What I also like is if you open a blocked app, it just shows that it's blocked right now. There's no fake crashing or closing the windows. This is especially nice with Stage Manager. A lot of times what would happen with me with like Ouchie is I would have some apps open in a stage, but then I would have one app that was blocked. So it would just crash that whole stage and I wasn't able to get to those other apps unless I, you know, removed them in the background, unless I just, you know, moved it to a separate stage. And now it just shows a window that, hey, this app is blocked, but you can use the other stuff in your current stage. Now, technically, Focus OS is just an iPhone app, but it's not that bad to use, especially if you're using Stage Manager on your iPad. It just kind of looks like another floating window. One tap is a place to store text, links, and images you use often. Kind of like my snippet cut shortcut, but better. With this, you can store your text and organize it into different folders. I keep stuff like my email address, text templates, physical address, and more in here. This is stuff that I could be typing dozens of times a day, but having one place where it is means I can get to it quickly and it just saves me time. Plus, I know it's being written consistently the same way. You can also classify text as a link in here as well. I keep stuff like links to my YouTube channel and website here. Again, this is stuff I can type a lot during the day, but because I'm keeping it in here and pulling it from here, not only do I know it's getting typed consistently, I know it's getting typed right because I, like everyone else, can mistype things. You can also store images in here. So I keep like my profile picture in here in case I need to send it off to somebody, you know, if somebody needs like a headshot for promotion stuff or whatever, or if I find a place and it's like, oh, I didn't uh, update my profile picture there, I can just do it really quickly. But the secret sauce of OneTap is the fact that it has support for an on-screen specific keyboard. So you can toggle over to this and you can quickly insert text or a URL just really quickly right from the keyboard. I love this because it's so much faster than using my snippet cut shortcut because of shortcut limitations. That's just limited to a list and there's a lot of scrolling. It's not great, it, but I've lived with it for years. But having this on-screen third-party keyboard, being able to use folders and stuff like that, it means I'm able to organize things a lot easier. I can find things a lot quicker and I can just paste it in. Honestly, I'm kind of debating just having this replace my snippet cut shortcut completely, but I haven't, I haven't quite gotten there just yet. This video is sponsored by Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects you and your data. I worked in IT for almost nine years and one day we decided to set up this fake coffee shop. It had like this open Wi-Fi network and basically we just wanted to see if we were able to snoop on other people's devices. And the stuff we were able to get was kind of scary. With Surfshark, your data would be completely encrypted from your device to its destination so it wouldn't be possible to snoop on. Data is the new gold and even with a little bit of data, some scary people can do some frightening stuff with it. One thing I really appreciate about Surfshark is they don't keep logs. Keeping logs defeats the purpose of using a VPN. 
Another bonus of using a VPN is you can see what other streaming services have going on in different countries. So I'm in the US, so I can see what Netflix UK has going on. I really like Surfshark. In fact, a couple of years ago, it's a service I started paying for myself. I'm gonna put links in the description below so you can go check it out for yourself. Use code LOLLY at checkout to get an extra four months for free. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. Luminar is a photo editing app that has been on the Mac for a long time. The whole point of Luminar is it's a photo editing app that can help you get the image you want, the edited image that you want without needing the knowledge of Photoshop. I like what Luminar does for the most part. I think this is a great app if you're curious about getting into photo editing and you want to learn like what certain controls do like highlights and exposure and all that stuff. I think this is a great place to start. Now, when opening up the app, it is focused on your photo library from the Photos app. This is perfect for beginners because this is where most of their photos are going to be. I do wish it would highlight if it was a raw photo in this normal grid though. You can filter it down to those. If you're planning on editing a photo, like if you know you're going to take a photo of this beautiful landscape and you're going to edit it, take it in raw. A raw photo has more data in it. It contains more information about the highlights, the shadows, all sorts of different things. So it makes it a lot easier to edit than something like a flat JPEG. But if you hit the folder icon in the bottom right corner, you will be able to browse the files app. This is where I store all of my raw photos in the iCloud Drive section of files. I can just pull any of those up on any device and edit them. Once you have a photo selected, you can start your edit. There are standard controls like highlights, shadows, white and black levels, and brightness, along with white balance controls, vibrance and saturation, and vignetting. Under the develop tab, there are some enhanced settings which use AI to improve photos. This is where Luminar moves away from traditional photo editing and it kind of takes the controls a little bit away from the user and just tries to use AI to clean this stuff up. The problem with AI is, well, with any AI, it's a black box. You don't really know what you're going to get when you start fiddling with these controls. So personally, I would say try and use the develop tab, try and use the stuff I just talked about Try and learn that stuff first before you get into this. It's fine if you need these tools to kind of just clean up something, but I wouldn't rely on them for every photo you take because you just don't quite know what you're going to get. But all that being said, I totally understand if you're, you're learning, you're just starting out and you, you turn these on and you're like, wow, this gives me the photo I really want. That's great. Now, under all the AI tools, there is a landscape control tool, and there is basically three controls into this. The first is controlling golden hour, so basically kind of adding more yellows to your photo. So if you're like taking a photo right before sunset or right after sunrise or something like that, and you're just like, I just want to bring a little more golden hour into it, you can. Uh, there's foliage controls, which basically just brings out the color and the foliage, brings out the greens and stuff like that. And then there is kind of a, a foggy or a way to kind of clear up the image if you wish that it's maybe not as sharp. Then there are other standard photo editing controls like curves, details, and a few other things. But on the bottom left side, you can change the mode of the photo editing process. Luminar has some built-in templates that are very good, especially if you're just trying to give your photo kind of a, a almost like a just a filtered look, but better than an Instagram filter. A couple that I really like are the Wooden and Athena options. Then there is a third option down here, and this is the Sky Replacement Utility. Now, I know people that are very good professional photographers and they do sky replacement stuff all the time especially before cameras did like had, had a lot of dynamic range uh, they would spend hours and hours and hours and hours doing sky replacement in their photos luminar is extremely good with this you just tap it it handles all the masking it removes the old sky and it just adds one in now there has to be enough sky in the image so it can determine that there is a sky there i have a few photos that there just wasn't enough sky and it just can't quite determine it's there and, and what to crop out and stuff like that but if it see finds the sky it does a really good job at the cropping now, the obvious caveat with this is that 
if you took a photo during the day at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you took a photo, a night sky isn't going to look good with that photo unless you spend a ton of time editing that photo. So if you're going to replace the sky, I would replace it with something around that same time of day, whether it's golden hour in the middle of the day or at night. But there are controls on this page to kind of help you blend the sky and the photo you took together to kind of make it look seamless. Getting this right is just going to take a little bit of fiddling. Now, me personally, this isn't going to replace Lightroom. And all of these AI tools for enhancing photos or uh, removing the sky and stuff like that, I wouldn't use these tools uh, for photos I'm going to sell or... Uh, enter in something or use professionally, I personally wouldn't use those tools for it. I am a control freak. I want to have control over the whole photo and I want everything that gets edited in that photo to be something I purposefully had done. But with all that being said, maybe you don't want to be a professional photo editor. You just want to be able to quickly edit a photo, make it look nicer than what it did uh, when you captured it on your iPhone or another camera or something like that. I think these tools are kind of great for that. So I would check this app out if you're interested in it. Clean Email is an app I heard from my uh, pal, John Voorhees, talk about on the App Stories podcast over on Mac Stories. By the way, if you missed the news, uh, I have a new podcast that's over on Mac Stories as well. It's called Comfort Zone. It's all about trying out new tech. I'll put a link to it in the description below. But Clean Email is an app for managing your email inbox. You can use this as a full-fledged email client or just as a place to triage your email inbox. Clean Email filters your emails into different folders. This gives you a place to unsubscribe from unwanted email or newsletters. Uh, you can create rules based on senders, domains, or even who the message is addressed to. There's a screener option so that messages from people that you have never talked to don't get put in your inbox and kind of get moved to the side. There's also custom filters for stuff like travel, online shopping, and more. There's a ton of controls for filtering your emails into different boxes. This is a lot like SaneBox, but instead of SaneBox being a middleman, this just acts as the email client. So your email is coming into this and then it's doing the filtering on your device. I have two issues with this app and I almost didn't cover it because of these issues and, and the first one in particular. First, it's a subscription-based app and, and I have nothing against subscription-based apps. I actually think subscription-based apps, this is not going to be a popular opinion, it, they're necessary. The, the model of buying software once and having it forever is not sustainable. It costs money to develop software. It costs money to update software, especially when new OSs and new features come out. It costs money to do that, and that's what subscriptions pay for. I know not everyone likes it, but that's what it's for. But this app is subscription-based, but there was no trial. At least I could not find a trial at all. So I just had to flat out pay for it just to see if I would even like it. And I don't like that at all. I do think like if you're going to have a subscription, there should be a trial period so people can figure out like, oh, does this work for me? Especially with productivity software. Like, does this work for me? Is this something that can be a part of my workflow? No. Okay, great. No big loss. Oh, yes. Great. Sign me up. The other issue is Apple Mail at some time in the next year. We don't know when. It's We, we just know it's not going to be in September. Uh, Apple Mail will be getting filtering style features like this, smart filtering style features. I'm excited for those, but I have no idea how those are going to work. I have no idea how much control you will have over them. Will you be able to manually create filters? Will you be able to block senders like you can with clean email or sane box? I, I, I don't know. So I'm going to try that stuff out when it comes out. I'll make a video about it. But, uh, that stuff is coming. So, you know, just a word of warning at, at some point in the next year, it's coming. But I really do like these apps and services that give you more control over your email, especially as somebody that gets a ton of email. If I just had everything come into my inbox, it would be a disaster. I would never be able to find important stuff. And right now, I'm able to use stuff like this to um, elevate important emails. And while stuff that isn't exactly important or maybe I don't even really need to deal with kind of gets pushed to a side in another inbox. Unsqueeze is a video upsizing app. It has support to go up to 8K for video sizes. 
A few times in the last week, I have been sent uh, video clips that were 1080p, but they needed to go into a 4K timeline. So I used Unsqueeze to up-res those video clips so that they were in a 4K image. They look great, and I can guarantee nobody that saw that final video project could tell that those were up resed video clips. They just looked fine. They looked normal. For small clips, Unsqueeze is very quick. It uses Metal, uh, which is Apple's framework. It runs incredibly fast. It's really impressive. But I've started using this for Comfort Zone as well. So Comfort Zone, the service we use, Riverside, to record the video portion of the podcast, because it's also a video podcast. So I have it set to just do 1080p for the local recordings. Uh, I do that for a couple of very uninteresting reasons. But what I've been doing is with Unsqueeze, you can batch up res multiple video files at once. So what I'll do is I'll get all the video clips, put them in Unsqueeze, up res them to 4K, and then it does take a little bit of time. I'll fully admit those are over an hour long video clips and there's four of them. Uh, so I'll just go get lunch and when I come back, they're all done and I can start the edit. It works out really nice. This is probably the most niche app that I'll talk about in this video, but it saved my bacon a couple of times in the last few weeks alone, so I wanted to cover it. Overlap is a time zone app. This is another app I have been using because of Comfort Zone. Uh, Matt is in Chicago and Neilion is in France. Chicago might be easy for me to do the, the mental math. They're just a two hour difference between me and where I am. But France, I have, uh, that's, that, that's more than I can handle. Overlap has a beautifully designed widget that you can set up and use to track the time zone in other areas. Time zones are hard. The nice thing about this widget is the color shifts depending on the time of day. If it's night or day in that area, the color will shift to match that. In the widget settings, you can of course change what time zones are shown. In the actual app itself, you can add more as well. If you work with a lot of people or talk to a bunch of people that are in different time zones, uh, this is just one of those really handy utilities to have right on your home screen because you can be like, oh yeah, it's midnight there. They're probably not going to be getting back to me until the next morning, so don't expect a response right now. Solver has been a utility that has been on the Mac for years, like as long as I have been an Apple person, it's always been there. Now it's on the iPhone and iPad. Solver is a natural language calculator. You can write out problems, set variables, and even change data and it updates live. Solver even has support for syntax highlighting. Now, Math Notes, which was a feature Apple just introduced at WWDC for the brand new calculator app that's on the iPad and the Notes app as well. Uh, it's, it's, Math Notes and Solver are very similar, but Solver is kind of like the, the pro version of Math Notes. Solver can get a bit more full featured and there is some wild stuff you can do with it, like setting global variables. So no matter what Solver document you are in, you can always call the same variable. That way that data set is always the same. But if for some reason that data was to change, so say for example, I made a global variable of my age. And then when my birthday came around, obviously my age is gonna go up by one. I could go into the global variable, add one more, and it will automatically adjust every single document that that global variable is in. There's also stuff like support for currency and stock, which update automatically because that stuff does fluctuate. Then there's even support for weather as well, which is just cool. What kind of nerd doesn't like weather? That's cool. If you're wanting to play around with something that's similar to Math Notes, or if you're wanting something that has a few more features than Math Notes, check out Solver. So those are the new iPad apps I have been playing with. I'm gonna put links to everything in the description below. My thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video. If you liked the video, hit the thumbs up button, subscribe if you haven't already, and have a great day.